couple of things I want to show you because it's very important you're going to encounter this when you are in the field and there's some modifications. So let's uh, first uh, talk about, right, uh, here we have a, a, someone who is pregnant and they have a gravid uterus, right? I know I took out the baby, but we're going to say we have a gravid uterus and let's say they're going to go into cardiac arrest, right? Uh, and you check the pulse, right? Pulse is absent. And let's say they are maybe 34 weeks, 36 weeks, right? Along, they have a gravid valve, meaning, right, the belly is big. What's the problem with this? What's the problem with somebody who is pregnant? The vena cava. What is it? The vena cava is compressed. Excellent, right? So they, not just vena cava, but also they compress the aorta. So they call it aortic cable compression, right? So you guys understand what I'm saying? Aortic cable compression. When the baby uh, is laying. When the mom is laying flat like this, the baby's compressing both the aorta and the vena cava. So if I'm doing compressions, do you think the blood can come back and forward? No, because of the compressions, right? So how are we how are we gonna release that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a partner will push the belly to the side. Yeah, so do you know what's that called? So that's called left uterine displacement, right? So if you come come on this side, come on this side, come over here. So what you're gonna do is let's say if the baby goes inside, you're gonna Find the uterus, and you're going to basically displace the uterus to the side, right? Very good. So this is called left uterine displacement. You need to do this when uh, you're doing active CPR. Now, for the CPR itself, right, if I was going to do CPR, is my hand placement uh, changes? No, hand placement is the same. Your hand placement is the same, right? Yeah, your hand placement. You guys are probably thinking about the high work maneuver, right, where you're going to go higher, but the CPR hand placement is the same, right? What about your ratio? Same, right? What is the ratio, by the way? 30 to 2, or if you could do continuous compressions, right, with ventilations. Very, very good. So this position is maintained throughout the uh, mega code or cardiac arrest setting, right, as we're doing compressions and we're ventilating, we call ALS, right, for, for this, right? Uh, and uh, that's what we're, we're doing. Uh, now, the other important factor uh, for this, right, uh, I said um, the best thing for the fetus, right, is to make sure the mom stays alive, right? Uh, and because how is the baby getting its blood supply, its nutrients, its oxygen is through what? It's through the umbilical cord, right? And how does the umbilical cord get all that? Exactly, to the placenta to the mom. So we wanna make sure the mom stays alive, so we have to resuscitate mom first. We have to care for the mom, CPR for the mom, right? Blood pressure management for the mom, airway management for the mom. So you wanna call ALS, Right? But if it came to the point where you have to do compressions, right, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to palpate, you're going to find the fetus inside the mom, left uterine displacement, you're going to move to the side to relieve your cable compression, and then you're going to do your comp compressions like a fetus. The other thing, right, we talked about for the infant, if let's say the, the neonate, right, is born, right, and uh, it's limp, right, uh, you're going to first do the basic maneuvers, right, dry, stimulate, and we said rub the lower back, stimulate, and uh, flip the soles. Uh, turn up the temperature, right, for the head covering. And now uh, we are putting the pulse ox, and I said if you have your stethoscope, right, can I actually borrow your stethoscope for a second? What you're going to do is, uh, on the baby, I'm going to, I'm not going to put it in my ears. For me, I said you can do is, so let's say the baby's laying like this, and I wasn't sure, right, I was palpating, and I'm not sure if I feel in pulsations, right? So I know some of you guys said I checked the brachial and the femoral, and I'm still not sure. I'm not sure, right? How else can I do it? I take my stethoscope and I place it on the chest, right? And I hear lub dub, right? And I count it for 15 seconds times four or 30 seconds times two or a full minute if you want to do it, right? Uh, that tells you apical pulse, right? That tells you the pulsations. I put the pulse ox on them, right? That tells me also the heart rate that I may see, right? And then, thank you so much for the stethoscope. And then if we were to start compressions on the infant, right? First, if the heart rate is less than 100, we do positive pressure ventilation, right? So, then what was the DVM? It was somewhere here. Tiaga. Right, so we start positive pressure ventilation, and you see the manometer here, right? Sometimes, right, the manometer, this is the, you see this gauge? You want, you want to be in green, so you have a chest rise, but sometimes because they have, maybe they have aspirate or they have meconium, you may need to, close this valve, the relief valve, right? You're gonna override it to generate this pressure. 
and you would know there's resistance because when you squeeze this like it doesn't give you ease there's no com ease of compliance it's resistance so you know there's something in there right uh, so different call ELS we said compression is when the heart rate is less than 60 right you're gonna do what three, three to one so come over here show me how it, you would do it so let's say I'm over here right now do the hand from circling technique right put your other hand like this right count for me one, two, three. Got one, one, two, two three. Speed. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. And I will have my pulse socks and I'll reassess 30 seconds and I'll see. Let's say my heart rate is now, right, one, uh, let's say it's 94. Let's just say it's 94. We're going to stop what? We're going to stop. Compressions, but at a heart rate of 94, am I still ventilating? Yeah. yeah, so you stop compression, I still ventilate. Now my heart rate is 118. Should I still continue positive pressure ventilate? No, right? Then I reassess. Maybe I need to give them blow by oxygen or some other right modality, right? Make sense? If you want to preserve the heat, turn up the, the heat in the ambulance. Make sure the baby's covered, right? When you do this, uh, definitely call ALS, right? Uh, we talked about uh, the procedures for uh, meconium aspirations, right? About the other minute. I just want to show you real quick how to put sterile gloves. I don't know if uh, Moon showed you. So these are not sterile gloves, right? Uh, and uh, before you put them on, you could wash your hands, but in the ambulance, we probably don't have uh, the sink, right? So you have a hand sanitizer, right? You want to cleanse your, your fingers. Uh, why do we use sterile gloves, by the way? Sterile. We keep it sterile. And what is one of the procedures we learned today? You have to use the sterile gloves. The, the cord, right? Relieve the pressure of the cord, right? So these are the sterile gloves, as you can see, this is uh, size eight, right? So uh, you're gonna open them up only when you need them, right? They're very expensive, by the way. They come in this uh, packaging. If you guys wanna come closer, you can take a look. What I do first, right? I wanna make sure I put it somewhere on the bench and I wanna open up all this packaging so it's ready to go. And then I open this, make sure you don't touch inside. So I am at this position, right? Right now. Next thing I do is I grab by the, by the edge of one glove after I done good skin prep. And I want to make sure all my fingers, right, are engaged before I put this on. So when I put this on, I want to get this all the way to my hand right so I have one on I'm gonna cup the other one like this under and again you want to make sure your fingers are engaged sometimes when they're in the packaging it may be a little difficult And you go all the way, right? So now, once I have my sterile gloves on, I designate what's going to be the sterile hand and what's going to be my working hand. Working hand is going to get contaminated, right? So, at, at this point, right, when you have this on, right, I want to make sure my partner assists me. If I need to remove the gallons, chucks, or whatever to get to the area, I'll ask my partner to do so. And let's say I designate this as my sterile hand, I always keep it off, right? Never below my uh, level of my belly, right? Uh, I don't want to go below the belt. So this always stays off, I know it's sterile. So I only this is gonna be relieving the pressure or anything like this. And this is gonna be my assistance hands if I need to, right? Maybe uh, spread the skin or adjust or anything, and this is gonna be my sterile hand. Once you relieve the pressure and you're in there, right? This stays in until you're at the facility. Make sense? Right? So these are the sterile gloves. You saw how I opened them up, right? Uh, what you can do is you can practice right folding your regular gloves, doing this, right? Uh, and these are quite expensive, right? Uh, when you start mode, take a bigger size. This is size eight, right? Uh, take a bigger size so you can put them on. I think they gave you some gloves so you can practice at home, right? Uh, so you can do this. Any questions about sterile gloves? Right? Uh, any questions about, yeah? Uh, so do we have to practice the work hand and the sterile hand? Yeah, I would, it, yeah, I would, I would practice in terms of you start sterile gloves. So it, it, it's not about per se pregnancy, but whatever procedure you're doing, whatever you're going to, uh, whatever has to be a sterile uh, thing that you touch or you handle or you go inside like in internally right into the anatomy you want to have a sterile hand and 
the, the thought process the way I have it, that I, I keep up. So don't, like, let's say if I'm doing something, if I have to move something in, I keep this hand up out of the reach of out of anything, so I don't contaminate it. And if I had to move something, I would use this hand. I will ask my partner to, ask, uh, to help me. But this hand stays up. Because the moment I bring it down, I may touch something, and I lose sterility. So I just keep it up, whatever I'm doing. But once I'm in the procedure, I, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing the procedure. How to take them off, right? So once you finish, right, what you're going to do, you're going to put it, pull it to the side. You're going to move it like this, and you're going to cup it. You see that? And then these fingers go here. And you're going to roll it. And if it goes into, depending, like biohazard, if it's blood or whatever things in it. Uh, if I need to, by the way, this field that I opened this gloves on, this is still inside the sterile. So if I had to, if I wanted to put some gauze or anything, I would just drop it in here. All my sterile stuff, like scalpel, whatever I need. Right? Any questions about anything? Everything's clear? And everything's clear. No questions. Any at all? For? To help deal with the baby? Yeah, yeah you're not, there's going to be definitely enough of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're going to be splattered with all the meconium and lubricants that you ever, it's going to come in gushing amounts. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so.